Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an important subject to discuss, West Nile virus. Join us as we unravel the mysteries surrounding this viral disease, its symptoms, transmission, prevention, and much more. Let's get started. What is West Nile virus? West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne virus that primarily infects birds but can also affect humans, horses, and other mammals. It is named after the West Nile region in Uganda, where it was first identified in 1937. It belongs to the Flaviviridae family. History of West Nile Virus The history of West Nile Virus WNV, dates back to 1937 when it was first discovered in the West Nile region of Uganda, Africa. The virus was initially identified in a woman who was experiencing symptoms of a mild fever. In the following decades, West Nile virus was primarily known to cause sporadic outbreaks and mild illness in Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Europe. It gained more attention in the scientific community as a significant cause of febrile illness. In the late 1990s, a more virulent strain of WNV emerged in Israel and caused an outbreak with severe neurological complications. This marked a turning point in the understanding of the virus's potential to cause severe disease. In 1999, West Nile virus made its way to North America for the first time. It is believed to have been introduced through infected birds or mosquitoes. The outbreak began in New York City and quickly spread to other parts of the United States and Canada. Thousands of human cases were reported, leading to widespread concern and surveillance efforts. The global impact of West Nile virus continues to be significant. It has been reported in many countries, including parts of Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia. As research advances, efforts are focused on developing effective vaccines, antiviral treatments, and better prevention strategies to mitigate the impact of West Nile virus on human and animal health. Structure of West Nile Virus The West Nile Virus WNV, is a single-stranded RNA virus that belongs to the Flaviviridae family. Its structure include Envelope E protein. The outermost layer of the virus is composed of envelope proteins, E proteins, that form a lipid envelope. These proteins are responsible for mediating viral attachment and fusion with host cells. Membrane. M. Protein. Beneath the lipid envelope, the virus contains a layer of membrane. M. Proteins that anchor the viral envelope to the viral core. The M protein is involved in the assembly and release of new viral particles. Capsid. C. Protein. The viral core is made up of a protein called capsid C protein. The C protein encapsulates the viral RNA genome, protecting it from degradation and facilitating its replication and transcription. RNA genome. The genetic material of WNV is a positive sense, single-stranded RNA molecule. This RNA contains all the necessary instructions for viral replication and the production of viral proteins. Non-structural NS proteins. The polyprotein encoded by the viral genome is cleaved into several non-structural NS proteins, including NS1, NS2A, NS2B, NS3, NS4A, NS4B, and NS5. These NS proteins play crucial roles in viral replication and immune evasion. How West Nile Virus Transmitted West Nile Virus WNV, primarily spreads through the bite of infected mosquitoes. Let's explore the transmission process in more detail. Mosquitoes as vectors. Mosquitoes are the main vectors for WNV transmission. Specifically, mosquitoes belonging to the Culex species, such as Culex pipiens and Culex quinquefasciatus, are the most common carriers of the virus. These mosquitoes become infected by feeding on infected birds, which serve as reservoir hosts for virus. Avian reservoir. Infected birds carry high levels of the virus in their bloodstream. When mosquitoes bite these infected birds, they ingest the virus along with the blood meal. Amplification. Inside the mosquito's body, the virus replicates and multiplies, eventually infecting various tissues, including the salivary glands. Transmission to humans and animals. Once the mosquito is infected with WNV, it can transmit the virus to other hosts, including humans and animals, during subsequent blood meals. Dead End Hosts. Humans, horses, and other mammals are considered dead-end hosts because they do not produce high enough levels of the virus in their bloodstream to infect feeding mosquitoes. It's important to note that while mosquitoes are the primary mode of transmission, but in rare cases WNV can also be transmitted through transfusion and organ transplantation, mother-to-child transmission and during laboratory accidents. Pathogenicity of West Nile Virus 
The pathogenicity of West Nile virus, WNV, refers to its ability to cause disease and the factors that contribute to its virulence. Here is a brief overview of the pathogenicity of WNV. Viral replication. Once the virus enters the body through a mosquito bite, it primarily targets cells of the immune system, including dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells. WNV then replicates in these cells, leading to the production of viral particles and subsequent infection of other cells. Immune response. In most cases, the immune system effectively clears the virus, resulting in mild or no symptoms. However, in some individuals, an overactive or dysregulated immune response can contribute to the development of severe disease. Neuroinvasion. WNV has a particular affinity for neural tissues. After initial replication in peripheral tissues, the virus can cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the central nervous system, CNS. Once in the CNS, it can infect neurons, causing inflammation and damage, leading to neurological complications such as meningitis, encephalitis, and acute flaccid paralysis. Host factors. The pathogenicity of WNV can vary depending on the host's age, overall health, and immune status. Individuals with weakened immune systems, older adults, and individuals with certain underlying medical conditions are more susceptible to severe disease and complications. Viral factors. WNV consists of different strains, and some strains are more pathogenic than others. The genetic makeup of the virus can influence its ability to replicate, evade the immune system, and cause severe disease. What are the symptoms of West Nile virus infection? While the majority of people infected with WNV do not develop any symptoms, some individuals may experience mild to severe symptoms. Here are the key symptoms associated with West Nile virus. Mild symptoms. Most people, about 70 to 80 percent, infected with West Nile virus do not exhibit any symptoms. However, some individuals may experience mild symptoms that last a few days to a few weeks, including fever, headache, fatigue, body aches, nausea, vomiting, swollen lymph nodes. West Nile fever. In some cases, West Nile virus can cause a more pronounced illness known as West Nile fever. The symptoms of West Nile fever include high fever, severe headache, stiff neck, muscle weakness or pain, joint pain and rashes. Neurological symptoms. In rare instances, the West Nile virus can lead to severe neurological complications, such as, encephalitis, inflammation of the brain, and meningitis, inflammation of the membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. If you suspect you may have contracted West Nile virus or are experiencing concerning symptoms, it is best to consult a healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. How to diagnose West Nile virus infection? Here are the common methods used for diagnosing WNV infection. Clinical evaluation. Healthcare providers assess the patient's medical history, including any recent travel to regions where WNV is prevalent or potential exposure to mosquito bites and perform a physical examination to identify signs associated with WNV infection. IgM antibodies test. Immunoglobulin M. IgM. Antibodies appear early in the course of infection and can be detected within a few days to a few weeks after symptom onset. IgM testing is commonly used for initial diagnosis. Ig antibodies test. Immunoglobulin G. Ig antibodies develop later and can indicate a past or recent infection. A rise in Ig antibody levels confirm recent WNV infection. Polymerase chain reaction (PCR) PCR testing is used to directly detect the genetic material (RNA) of the virus. This method is most effective when performed soon after symptom onset when the virus is still present in the bloodstream. Cerebrospinal fluid (CSF) analysis. If neurological complications are suspected, a lumbar puncture may be performed to collect cerebrospinal fluid (CSF). The CSF can be analyzed for the presence of WNV antibodies, viral RNA, or other abnormalities associated with CNS infections. How to prevent West Nile virus infection? Preventing West Nile virus WNV infection primarily involves minimizing exposure to mosquitoes and reducing the risk of mosquito bites. Here are some effective preventive measures. Eliminate mosquito breeding sites. Remove any sources of standing water around your home, such as flower pots, buckets, bird baths, and clogged gutters. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in standing water, so eliminating these breeding sites reduces their population. Use mosquito repellents. Apply an EPA-registered mosquito repellent on exposed skin and clothing. Look for repellents containing active ingredients like DEET, 
Picardin, IR3535, or oil of lemon eucalyptus. Wear protective clothing. When outdoors, especially during peak mosquito activity times, dawn and dusk, wear long-sleeved shirts, long pants, socks, and closed-toe shoes to minimize exposed skin. Install and maintain window and door screens. Ensure that all windows and doors in your home have properly fitted screens without any holes or tears. This helps keep mosquitoes out while allowing fresh air to circulate. Avoid outdoor activities at peak mosquito times. Mosquitoes that carry WNV are most active during dawn and dusk. If possible, limit your outdoor activities during these times to reduce the risk of mosquito bites. Support mosquito control efforts. Participate in local mosquito control programs and initiatives. These may include larvicide treatments of standing water, spraying insecticides, or implementing measures to reduce mosquito populations in the community. Protect horses. If you own horses, ensure they receive a WNV vaccination. Consult with a veterinarian to determine the appropriate vaccination schedule for your horses and implement other mosquito control measures in their living areas. Stay informed. Stay updated on WNV activity in your area through local health departments or relevant authorities. Be aware of any public health advisories or alerts and follow their recommendations. Conclusion. We hope that we've shed some light on the mysteries surrounding West Nile virus. Remember, prevention is key when it comes to mosquito-borne diseases. Stay informed, take necessary precautions, and consult a healthcare professional if you suspect you may have contracted the virus. Thank you for your valuable time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Stay healthy, stay safe. Until next time.